Okay, Curtis, this is one of the areas that uh, the fire came right up to, but because of the defensible space that the owner on the property here was trying to achieve, he was able to save his property. Welcome to today's Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm Curtis Smith. I'm here with Los Alamos County agent, Carlos Valdez, and he can tell us about this property, which is one of the ones that survived because of the landscaping here. Carlos? Curtis, what we have here is a, one of the historic houses here in Los Alamos. This is the old Bradbury house. And the gentleman who is now here, Howard Cady, has been working closely with State Forestry and with myself and with the U.S. Forest Service in getting this area thinned to the proper number of trees in here um, so that when fire did move through here, it moved through at a very low to a medium heat and actually did not get up into the tree crowns uh, and scorch the trees. Uh, and another thing that he did in here uh, was create some access lanes so that the uh, local fire department could come in and defend this, this property. And there are two access lanes on this property, one on this side, another on the other side of the house. And uh, it was because of those access lanes and because of the communication that this gentleman had with the fire department uh, that they were able to come in here quickly and, and manage this fire. So he created a situation that invited the fire department in, and that resulted in his house being saved, in addition to the fact that he had thinned. Right, exactly okay. right. And I notice here the fire had not gone into the crown of the trees. It was a ground fire. We've got scorched needles, but the trees themselves weren't burning. Sure, and remembering, of course, that ponderosa pines have got a fairly thick bark and were actually made for these low to medium um, intensity fires. Uh, it's, it's when it gets up into the crowns of the trees where, where the trees don't have a chance. George Duda, urban forester with New Mexico State Forestry Division, is one of the people who's been working with Carlos to advise the homeowner in this location. And George, you've been giving advice about how to space the plants here, how to thin the forest. What is that you've been telling? Well, we, we defensible space is the key word. And how to control a fire and have an advantage over a fire near your home. Uh, we're standing in an area that's been thinned. The trees are, are 10, 12, 15 feet apart. The ladder fuels are almost non-existent. And, and ladder fuel is that which would bring fire from the ground up, up into the tree. Up into the tree, exactly. And these trees are alive, they're well, they're scorched uh, a little bit, but they're going to survive. And, that, and the key factor in that was thinning, removing ladder fuels, and spacing these trees out. Huh. We can look in the back, way back here, and you can see in the background, there's a stand of trees there that uh, could represent a thousand trees to the acre. Uh, a fire gets in there and the heat is very intense and we have a lot of damage. When you space these trees out and get them far apart, the heat is reduced and these trees can survive. A forest can survive a fire if, if the forest is ready for it. This kind of forest? This kind of a forest, yeah, yes. The ponderosa is actually designed for fire. Yes, it's a fire dependent species as a matter of fact. And uh, look on the ground, um, the, the homeowner here did not necessarily rake up the needles. Mm -hmm. However, they burned on the ground. Uh, it was, there was a separation between the ground fire and the top of the trees. Again, the elimination of the uh, ladder fuels. And these uh, ashes you see on the ground now have been recycled into nutrients. The trees will actually be benefited by that to an extent. And uh, it works well under these conditions. I see some of the scrub here. The oaks regenerating already. Yes, the oaks are coming up already. Uh, they have a root collar beneath the soil that uh, sprouts when there's, was a, when there's a problem. There was a problem here. So you're going to have oaks come back almost automatically. But defensible space is the word. Uh, don't be afraid to cut a few trees because we can save our forest by doing so. Well, I see another benefit of clearing. There's firewood here, which is useful here in this mm -hmm. cold climate right. during the winter. There are many, many benefits to defensible space, uh, not only forest health, forest safety, structure safety, but here's another benefit. This fuel is in the right place. It'll wind up in a fireplace under control and provide us heat. This kind of fuel out in that forest can add to the danger of threatening the taller trees as ladder fuels and destroy this forest as well as this home. So this is a good spot for this fuel. What's ironic is there's firewood here. There was mm -hmm. a fire all around it and mm -hmm. the firewood didn't burn. The firewood didn't burn, so it's, it's still, available, it's to still use. available to use. If it had been in the forest, it would have burned. It would have burned. It would have been unusable. Right. it would have created more hazards. Mm -hmm. That's, so there's a many, many ben benefits to defensible space. Carlos, oh, this is awesome. The fire came right up to here. It even burned cactus. But it looks like it stopped right here at the fence. Actually, Curtis, uh, the fire moved past the fence right up to this small ridge here. Uh, on this side of the ridge, they didn't bother to water the lawn. But on this side, the lawn was well watered. So they had an established grass, bluegrass lawn here. 
and it's looking beautiful and the other grass is coming back fine. And look, it just scorched these trees right here. Scorched these trees. Didn't burn them up, but it scorched them pretty good. But the fire again stopped right here. And, and then the grass right here saved the house. And the house is in good shape. Right. Whereas the properties next door and adjacent to this property weren't quite so lucky. This fire stopped right here. And the landscape has a lot to do with that. Absolutely. The trees were not dense. There are trees here and there's shade here. But it wasn't so dense and it wasn't the kind of trees that would cause the fire to move right in.